Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today we're going to learn some vocabulary and some cultural aspects related to talking about money. I personally like this topic a lot because I like to be transparent with my financial situation. I like to inspire people how to make more money and when you want to you know, kind of tell people something about investing or tell people something about financial planning, you kind of have to share what's going on in your life because the worst thing is where you are an expert in something but you are not succeeding in that particular sphere. So I personally like talking about money and I'm okay sharing where I lost money or where I made money, but I also understand that a lot of people don't like it and this topic is a complete taboo, especially if you're working for the same company. The management would highly discourage you from discussing your salary with your colleagues because sometimes salaries of people on the same position vary a lot because someone might have worked longer or someone had a different relationship with the boss. So people just don't like discussing it. And here you have to be really subtle because sometimes even your close friend wouldn't want to talk about financials. But if you feel that you're willing to share something about your financial life, if you feel that you want to read more about investing, about budgeting, about being a financial minimalist, this video is for you because we're going to go through vocabulary related to money and I'm going to explain some concepts. So if you're interested, hit the like button first and then continue watching this video. So number one, let's start with the worst situation, broke. This adjective describes a person who doesn't have money or who ran out of money. And uh, in a lot of times, people don't mean being actually broke. They just mean not having enough cash to go out. So for example, you say, you know, do you want to go to the movie theater tonight? And your friend answers, I can't, I'm broke. That doesn't mean that he doesn't have home or whatever, that he's going through bankruptcy, which is like the worst. It just means they don't have a lot of money right now to spend on entertainment. I'm completely broke. He took everything. The next word is cash. Cash is basically what you have in your pocket, your coins, your banknotes. But I also noticed that a lot of people who are in financial sphere, they call cash whatever you have on your checking account. So your account that doesn't make any interest, that is also cash. But if you want the simplest meaning of the word cash, that's your coins and your banknotes. I don't have any cash. Then the next word that's really important to know is currency. That means money used in particular country. So for example, the national currency of the US is an American dollar. The national currency of the UK is British pound. The national currency of Canada is Canadian dollar. That means currency. American currency. When you want to buy another country's currency, you buy it at an exchange rate. So for example, you come to Russia with $100 and you're asking, what's the current exchange rate from dollars into rubles? And people will tell you it's around 80 rubles per dollar. That's the exchange rate. What's the exchange rate? Now then you have your expenses. When you spend money on something, that's your expense. You pay the expenses. The next word, really important, interest. Remember we were talking about cash. So when cash is put at work, when cash is put into savings account, it's no longer cash. Those are your savings because they what? They earn you interest. Interest is a percentage that bank gives back to you because you put your savings into their savings accounts. The problem with savings accounts these days is that I know in some European countries, the interest rates on savings accounts are negative. And by the way, guys, if you could practice your English right now and just open Google in a separate tab and uh, put in current savings interest rate in your country and comment down below what it is, that would be really interesting. Because when I asked this question on Instagram, a lot of people from Denmark and other European countries were like, I just checked and it's actually negative. In the US, in some banks, it's like 0.01%. But I know in countries with higher inflation, it's still around five to 7% interest rate. So comment down below, what's the current interest rate in your country and practice your English. At a low interest rate. Loan is money that you borrow from a bank, from an institution. For example, she's trying to get a $100,000 loan from a bank to pay for her education which is, by the way, really sad. I don't think education should be as expensive as it is these days. I think it should be more affordable and uh, open to people from different backgrounds. Well, you're getting a loan. Now the next word is something that's inevitable. You know, there is a phrase, there are two things 
inevitable in our lives, death and taxes. So taxes is something that you pay to your government if you make money. The thing is, again, it's really different in different countries. I know in some, I think in Saudi Arabia, the tax rate is zero. Uh, let me know if I'm correct, but I get a lot of DMs from subscribers when I write about my 50% tax rate in the US. They're like, oh my God, we don't have taxes at all in my country. And I was so jealous. And again, this is another way for you to practice English. Google your tax rate, or if you know it, comment down below, what's the current tax rate in your country? And I know in some countries it's different. So for for example, in the US, some people pay 0% taxes and some people like me pay 50% taxes and some countries have like a fixed tax rate. We're talking about personal income tax rate. That means that you as individual pay tax on whatever you make to your government. There are also corporate tax rates and there are also other tax rates related to different entities. So I pay taxes. Another great word that you can use is withdraw. So when you take money from your account, instead of saying, I take money from the account, you can say, I am withdrawing money from my account. An example, there are no restrictions on the amount of money you can withdraw. People will withdraw their money. The next great word that you've probably heard a lot these days, it is called recession. Recession is a period of decreased economic activity. When people lose their jobs, things get more expensive, some industries stall or die, a lot of businesses close. An example is, I could not find a job for a whole year after 2008 recession. I even had to sell my car to pay the rent. Eh, recession sucks. But on the bright side, Recession is a really good time to invest. And investing means putting your money into stocks, bonds, and other things. For example, in the US, I invest through a couple of apps called Robinhood and Webull. And if you're in the US and willing to start to invest, if you use my affiliate links below, they're gonna give you free stocks. But the thing is, when we're in the recession, stocks of the companies tend to be cheaper. And uh, it is a really good time to buy because in a year, they would accelerate their growth and they would increase in price. So if you're interested in putting your money to work, research the topic of investing. This is, by the way, one of my favorite topics these days. And then invest that money. Another important American word that you have to know in order to understand the way American business world and financial world works is called financing. So when you're financing something, that means you are taking a loan to buy it. So for example, are you leasing this car or are you financing it? So leasing means kind of renting the car, but financing it means you're taking a loan and you're owning the car, but then you're paying your bank every month because you took a loan from them. That means financing the car. And uh, if you're financing an apartment or a house, that is called a mortgage. So a mortgage is when you come to a bank and you say, I wanna buy a house, but I only have like 200,000 and the house costs 1 million. Can you please give me a mortgage for $800,000? And then once the bank gives it to you, you say, I got a mortgage to buy a house. I got a, a, a $200,000 mortgage. And the last but not the least, I wanted to explain the difference between debit and credit. So if you have a debit card, that means you put some money on your debit card, like $10,000, and that means you can only spend $10,000 on that card. If you have a credit card, normally it says zero at the beginning. Again, I'm explaining American version of that. It might be different in different countries. But with a credit card in the US, when you get it, it says zero, but it says your credit limit is 35,000. And whenever you swipe your credit card, the zero changes to, for example, 250. That means you made a $250 purchase. And then you make a purchase of another thousand. So your credit card balance is $1,250. But that's actually something that's a little hard to understand. So this balance shows as positive in your bank account, but it actually means that you owe the bank because it's a credit card. So anything on the credit card, in your brain, you know it's negative because you owe it to the bank. Anything on the debit card is with a plus sign because this is something you owe and people just deduct it from your card. And by the way, when you say, can you debit this from my account? That means, can you just take it from my account? So for example, when I call my CPA, my accountant, and he says, Marina, you owe us $250. I'm like, can you just debit it from my account? And they just take it from my account. This is the way I pay it. On the other hand, if my CPA calls me and says, Marina, you have a $200 credit with us. That means that they owe me 
$200. That means that I overpaid maybe last month and now I have $200 more to spend using their service. Uh, so this is something that seemed a little illogical to me when I first came to the US and started dealing with personal finance. But now that I know it, uh, life is a lot easier. So I'm hoping you understand this. And the last but not the least thing I wanted to show you today, I just mentioned the word owe. So when you owe something to someone means you need to give that money back. And uh, this is something that I learned when I was on an exchange program in the UK. Let me show it to you. My friend left me a note saying, I owe you five. I was like, what does that mean? And she explained me that I stands for I, O stands for O-W-E, O means I need to give you back, and U means you. So I owe you five dollars means I need to give you back five dollars or five pounds in this situation. This is a financial acronym that people use a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. I know this was a little too advanced for some of you. Let me know what you think. I'm looking forward to reading your comments about the tax rate and interest rate in your country. But I really hope that this class was useful these financial classes were one of my favorite classes when I learned English, probably because I like finance. Uh, but let me know what you think. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet subscribed. If you decide to start investing, the affiliate links to the apps that I use would be below. Thank you so much and I will see you soon in my next videos. Bye bye.